All right, in the last lesson, we learned how to do an if, else if, and else statement. Uh, but now I want to show you how we can take some user input uh, and really customize what the program is supposed to do. And for this, we need to learn something new, something called prompt. In the last lesson, we learned about alert a little bit, a little informally, I suppose. Uh, but in this one, we're going to learn about the prompt, which is basically an alert with a little text box that allows people to enter information. Now, just as a heads up, nobody uses prompts anymore. But because prompts are nice and simple, uh, we are going to use them in this lesson just to show you how we can use user input uh, to change how the program acts. So let's go ahead and type name is equal to prompt. What is your name? Now here I hit shift enter because if I just hit enter, it's just going to give me a prompt and it's not going to do anything else. Now, this is where we start putting a lot of JavaScript inside of a JavaScript file so we can run more than one line at a time. Now if I said if name, actually let's do this, if name to lowercase is equal to Caleb, just my name, nothing fancy, alert, hello Caleb. Now that's a basic if statement, we can leave that here. In fact, I think we should run that, let's see what happens. What's your name? And I'm going to put, well, it's asking for Caleb in lowercase, so let's change that, let's put it all in uppercase. Minus the B, the B can be in lowercase. Because remember, user input is never the way you expect. So you have to do a little extra filtering to make sure that the user input is parsable. And there we go, it says, hello, Caleb. The reason for that is because it took my name, uh, which was K-A-L-O, all in caps with a lowercase b. It changed it to a lowercase, and then it said, if that lowercase value of the name variable is equal to lowercase Caleb, then alert. So what I have here is just a blank index file. There's no JavaScript being attached to this page at all. The first thing we need to do is attach the JavaScript file. So at the bottom of my body, I'm going to type script. SRC is equal to JavaScript.js. Now the JavaScript.js is your JavaScript file. Now I have a JavaScript.js file, and it's in the same directory as index.html. It's in the same folder. So this is all we have to do. Now, to make sure that this is working, let's go over to JavaScript.js and type alert, hello world. All we want to do is make sure that this script is working. I save that, save both files. I go over to Chrome and I refresh the page. And it says, hello world. That means our JavaScript file is working. Now, there are other ways to check it. Uh, this is one of the faster ways to check to see if your JavaScript is, is loading. You don't have to open your console or anything. It's just a, a blatant alert in your face. It's ugly, but it does the trick. So now we want to rewrite our script. Let's say name. Let's do variable name is equal to what is your name? And we want to wrap that with a prompt. And we say if name alert hello and we know how to concatenate right so we use hello concatenate variable name and hello guest so what this is doing is if someone enters a name if there is information in here it's going to return true. JavaScript is going to say, yep, there is something in there that is true. It is not undefined. It is not null. It is not false. That this data type from this value is in fact true. It has some information in there. And if there is, just give us an alert back, say hello, and whatever that value is. But if there isn't anything in there, if someone clicks the cancel button, what happens? Well, hello guest. Now this is called information flow or data flow. And this is also a very important concept, uh, pretty much of all programming languages, again, is what happens if something does not meet your expectation? What if someone cancels in the prompt? So let's save this, go back to this page, I'm going to hit refresh, and it asks me what my name is. Now there are only ever two scenarios, I can enter my name and hit OK, or I can cancel. So what happens when I put my name in, or anyone's name in, it doesn't have to be my name. Uh, let's put someone else's name in there. Let's put, my name is Zephyr, and I hit OK. Hello, Zephyr. Cool, that's user input. 
Now I refresh the page again to get that prompt running again. What is my name? And if I hit cancel this time, what's going to happen? Well, if we look back at our code, if there's a name, it's going to say hello plus your name. If there is nothing, it's just going to say hello guest. And in fact, it actually didn't. And that's because I forgot to take into account the null data type. And that's something that just happens with all programmers. Every now and then, uh, we move a little too fast. A lesson as a developer, making mistakes is okay. You're allowed to make mistakes as a developer. I'm giving you permission to make mis mistakes right now. Completely acceptable. It only becomes unacceptable when you start making the same mistake over and over and over and over again. So looking back at the code, we know that the value of name is null. Null came back as a true value. That's why it ran in here. So what we need to do is instead of running an else statement, we run an if else statement. Sorry, we run an else if statement. Else if name is equal to, let's do an exact comparison and see how that pans out. Alert, your name is empty. Save that, go back to the page and refresh. My name is, let's cancel. Again, it says hello null. Well, why is that? Well, it's because the if statement came before the else if statement. And so once this is true, it's going to ignore the rest of the, the, the entire statement. Uh, the chain of command goes from top to bottom. And once one of those is met, it doesn't matter what else you have in there. It's not going to include it. It's not going to run it. So what we need to do is we need to change the order of this here. So I'm just going to move this up one, move this down one. And so all I did was say, check if the name is null first. Now we're using a strict comparison here. Let's see what happens. What's my name? I hit cancel. Again, it says hello null. Why is it doing that? Could it be because we have var up there? Could it be because we're using a strict comparison? Could it be because null is supposed to be in quotes or apostrophes? Could be. Now, as a developer, this is one of those times when you need to understand that knowing everything is impossible. You don't have to remember things like this all the time. This is a small detail, and if you ever forget, it's totally acceptable to hop on the old Google machine and type in whatever your question or your query is, chances are it'll bring you to a Stack Overflow page and you'll find probably a pretty good answer in there. Now, I'm going to change this to null to remove the strict comparison. And I just want to see what this is going to happen, right? We're experimenting here. And again, experimenting as a developer, completely acceptable because that's how you learn. You experiment, you make mistakes, and you reiterate over that. And you just keep iterating. And when you iterate, you learn more and more. And that's all development is. That's really all technology is, is people trying new things and moving forward, failing, taking a step back, realizing why they failed and trying again. That's all it is. We still get null. That's fine. What happens if we remove var? We still get null. Now, another option that we have is to check to see if this is a string or not. Now, do you remember a few lessons ago, quite a few lessons ago, I said that user input always comes in as a string. For the most part, that holds true across every platform for every website and application. And that's just because we don't know if a number is, or if a user input is supposed to be a number or text, and that's our job as developer to figure out what it is. So all I'm going to do is add quotations around here. So now it's going to say, if the name is null as a string, like this is what it brought back. This is what it thinks your name currently is. Not that there's nothing in there, not that anything else, not that this is a number or a float. It just thinks that this is your name. So it would be a string. Save that, refresh the page, click cancel, and I guarantee you that this time it's going to work. Your name is empty, just like that. So now we know what happens when your name is empty. Now, as a learning lesson, go back, figure out what happened. Hit refresh, hit cancel. My name is still empty. So we know that it wasn't the var. 
What if we do a strict comparison? Same thing. So we know with the strict comparison that this is returning null. Now, another way we can check this is this beautiful, beautiful method here. Console log will log anything to your console. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just inspect, refresh the page, hit cancel. It says my name is empty. Go over to console, and this is what it came back with. So now we know what the answer is. Now we don't have to do a lot of this additional testing. We can do a console log right here. We can do a console log in here. We can do one in here. We can do one in here to see where the information is going. And it gives you a better visual idea of where your data is flowing to. Now, what happens when I put my name is Caleb, hit enter. Hello, Caleb. Caleb comes in here, just as expected, just like what null what, uh, what the null response gave us, but instead of null, it's Caleb. As a developer, as a programmer, it's also your job to look for efficiencies. So we look at this if else if else statement. We know that there can only ever be two different types of input, right? We know that there can only be a cancel and an OK. So you submit your name or you cancel. That's it. What we have here is if your name is empty, if you didn't add a name, alert that your name is empty. Otherwise, basically, in every other situation, just alert the name. So why on earth do we have the else statement in there at all? If there are only ever two scenarios, we only ever need two if else statements. We don't need to check what the name is in the else statement, because frankly, the name is always going to be reiterated back into the alert message. Now, if we wanted to make sure that the name was something very, very specific, then we would say if uh, else if name is equal to something else. And only in that time will this display. So let's try. Let's try another name. What this is doing, if you have no name, if you've canceled, your name is empty. If the name is Henry, alert Henry. Otherwise, if it doesn't meet either of these criteria, do nothing. And this is the exact same as leaving a blank else statement in there. The only difference is you don't need to have the else statement in there if nothing is going to run. So let's get rid of that, save it. Type in Henry. Hello, Henry. But as an example, when we type in any other name, we'll type in Prairie, nothing happens. We're, we're still getting the name, we're getting the console log. And that always comes right here. But there was no alert. So that is pretty much the most in depth if else if else statement based on user input uh, that anyone can really give you. Moving forward, the if and else if statements really don't get too complicated. But in the meantime, what I want you to do is I want you to basically take this script. If you can, I would prefer if you wrote this out. It's not a long script, so it's not going to take you very long. But writing it gives you a little bit of muscle memory in your fingers. So writing it becomes a little bit easier in the future. Alrighty, uh, so that's it for if, else if, and else statements. And we will see you in the next lesson.